What's up guys, welcome back to Card Spot. My name is Ethan and today we have something a little different. I feel like I've been saying that a lot lately. We're just trying different things on the channel and we're seeing what sticks. And if you enjoy any of these kind of videos, let me know in the comments. Today we're doing a bit of a news recap. There's been a lot of news in the last week uh, in terms of Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG predominantly. And I thought, hey, let's try maybe doing a news recap show. So if this is something that uh, interests you, might be something that you want to see on a weekly basis, let me know in the comments down below and let's get into it. Probably you've seen by now that the full set list for Age of Overlord has been released slash leaked and the big talking points of this obviously are the imports from the OCG and the world premiere cards for the TCG and some of those cards are pretty interesting so the biggest ones are Ken and Gen. So starting it off with Ken the Warrior Dragon. Once per turn at the end of the battle phase return this card from the field to the hand. You can only use each of the following effects of Ken the Warrior Dragon once per turn. During your main phase you can special summon one Gen the Diamond Tiger from your hand or deck to your opponent's field in defense position. If this card is special summoned by the effect of Gen the Diamond Tiger your opponent draws two cards and then they discard one card. So effectively what that is is you summon Ken, you special Gen to their field and Gen has a different effect when it's summoned. Gen says, once per turn at the end of the battle phase, return this card from the field to the hand. You can only use each of the following effects of Gen the Diamond Tiger once per turn. During your main phase, you can special summon one Ken the Warrior Dragon from your hand or deck to your opponent's field in defense position. If this card is special summoned by the effect of Ken the Warrior Dragon, discard one card. So, you normal summon Ken, you special summon Gen to their side of the field, they discard one card. Or, you normal summon Gen, special summon Ken to their side of the field, and you draw two cards and discard a card. So it's a nice little engine, but not only that, in decks like Dark World, it seems really good, right? Like, you're kind of your main combo in Dark World is to hand rip your opponent. So getting rid of one card in their hand seems pretty good, or drawing two cards and then discarding a card also seems pretty good so i think these cards will definitely have application in decks like dark world they're also level three warriors so you look at cards like ice old and cherubini so there's definitely i think some possibilities for them we'll have to see how it plays out in the wash but definitely some cards to watch out for and i'm definitely going to try and pick up myself a set of each we also got a whopping seven <laughs> testina cards which is a lot for some new tcg archetype support and they were good until they weren't. So let's just go through them in order of uh, set number, starting with Fallen of the Testina. So it's a Water Aqua level one, 200 attack, zero defense. Uh, you can send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard, place one Divine Domain Bat Testina from your deck, face up in your field zone, gets around Ash, that's nice. If a face-up to Stina spell or trap you control is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, while this card is in your graveyard, except during the damage step, you can banish this card, special summon one light Testina monster from your hand, deck, or graveyard. You can only use each effect of Fallen of the Testina once per turn. Okay, so they got an in-archetype uh, field spell searcher, that's pretty nice. They also, you get a free summon if it's in your grave when your field spell is destroyed. Also pretty good. Okay, that's not looking terrible. Next up we have Returned of the Testina. If this card is in your hand, you can target one Testina monster you control. Accept Returned of the Testina. Special summon this card, and if you do, its level becomes the targeted monster's level. If this card is in your graveyard, you can target one Aqua Xyz monster you control. Attach this card to it as material. You can only use each effect of Returned of the Testina once per turn. So it's like, okay, it's an extender, and if you have an Xyz monster on the field, while this is in your graveyard, you can use it as a material. Okay, that's alright, and obviously hinting at an Xyz monster, so let's keep going. Next up is Tainted of the Testina, a dark aqua level 5, 2000 attack, 0 defense. You can tribute summon this card by tributing one face down monster your opponent controls. Nice. This card's level becomes 10 if it's normal summoned or set. If this card is sent to the graveyard except from the field, you can target one Testina monster you control. This turn it can make a second attack during each battle phase. Also you can only attack with one monster. Okay, so it's kind of all right it's kind of removing the set monsters because that's what the deck does right it sets all your opponent's monsters and it needs a way to get rid of them so this is kind of it it gets to be level 10 which opens up some interesting xc's players 
okay, it's, it's all right. Then we have Testina, the divinity that defies darkness. This is the boss monster. This is the big Xyz monster. So it is a light aqua, rank 10, 2000 attack, 3000 defense, two level 10 monsters. If this card is special summoned, you can send all face down cards your opponent controls to the graveyard. You can only use this effect of Testina, the divinity that defies darkness once per turn. Uh, once per turn, if this card has crystal god Testina as material, you can detach one material from this card. It gains 2000 attack until the end of your opponent's turn. If this card you control is destroyed by an opponent's card while it has material, you can special summon one Testina monster from your graveyard. Okay, so there's a bit to unpack. So obviously when it's special summoned, it sends all face down cards your opponent controls to the graveyard not when it's exceeds summoned so that's quite nice if you can i don't know monster reborn it hey wipe their field again that's pretty cool detach material to make it 4k attack that's all right it can get over some rather large things is it super great not really um being destroyed while it has material and you can special summon any testina monster from your graveyard that's all right uh, you can special summon another of itself because it doesn't say you can't special summon except you know testina the divinity that defies darkness uh, and then if you had your returned of the testina in the graveyard you could then attach it as a material so it's okay but as a boss monster i feel like they just needed a little more uh, next up is play of the testina you can special summon oh, this is a quick play spell you can special summon one testina monster from your hand or graveyard in defense position but return it to the hand during the end phase you can only activate one play of the testina once per turn so i guess you know hand or graveyard's pretty good um just a free special but eh, it's okay then we have a couple of traps. So first up is a continuous trap called Embrace of the Testina. When your opponent activates a monster effect on the field, you can target that monster, change it to face down defense position. During the end phase, you can target one face down defense position monster your opponent controls, take control of that monster. You can only use each of the effects of Embrace of the Testina once per turn and can only activate them if you control a Testina monster with 3000 or more defense so you need the xyz on the field to use these effects uh, <laughs> or i think is it crystal god yeah it's crystal god uh okay i don't think it's very good to be honest like it would be not if it didn't have that clause it would be a lot better but even then it's it's still a trap so yeah and then they have another trap discordance of the testina this is a normal trap activate one of these effects if you control a testina monster banish one card from your opponent's graveyard face down if you control a testina monster special summon from the extra deck banish all cards from your opponent's graveyard face down you can banish this card from your graveyard then target one testina monster in your graveyard add it to your hand you can only use one discordance of the testina effect per turn and only once that turn so the secondary effect of this card uh, if you control a testina monster special summon from the extra deck banish all cards in your opponent's graveyard face down that's not to be sniffed at <laughs> I, I think this has more playability than the previous trap but overall i'm whelmed on top of the world premiere cards we also have the imports from the ocg coming into the tcg Eh, none of these are really worth writing home about um they're mainly from selection pack five in the ocg uh and there is some cards <laughs> i don't think any of these are going to set the world on fire um but i'll pop them up on the screen so you can have a quick look and as always with any of these topics that i discuss there will be a link down the bottom so that you can go and check it out in full for yourself and see exactly what I'm talking about in more detail. Next up, we get a little bit of news on Phantom Nightmare, the TCG set or the TCG core booster set that premieres after Age of Overlord. So this for us will be coming out in February 2024. Cards for the set are still being announced in the OCG, so there's not too much to be known about the actual set itself, but... As part of their official announcement for the set, Konami TCG did mention that the world premiere set for Phantom Nightmare will be a pyro archetype. They said, The events of an ancient battle play out over and over again as a brand new world premiere pyro theme lights up the field in Phantom Nightmare. Make sure to pick up Maze of Millennia to get your copies of Bonfire so you'll be ready to try it out when Phantom Nightmare launches in February. Bonfire, of course, is the searcher for pyro type. 
So it's interesting, Pyro's kind of gone for a long time without any decent support and now we're seeing a fair chunk of it so i like it i'm i'm all for it and i'm keen to see what this new world premiere archetype will be like staying on the phantom nightmare theme some of the new cards that did just get announced oh boy i think probably the biggest one so far but just for its uh, playableness in a lot of different decks is called back mutation currently that's the translation from the japanese uh, and what it is is kind of a re reverse metamorphosis so it's a normal spell card you can only activate one card with this card's name once per turn tribute one fusion or synchro monster special summon one monster with the same original level from your deck but return it to the hand during the end phase oh boy <laughs> so I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is Runic Sprite. You know, you use one of the Runic cards to cheat out one of the level 2 Runic Fusions. You play this, you return that to the extra deck and bring out a level 2 Sprite, Sprite Blue maybe from your deck. It's effectively another Sprite starter for them. So this seems really good. And I'm sure there'll be a plenty of decks that can use this. So yes, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I think that card's going to be pretty sought after, to be honest. And as we talk, it seems like there's more cards being announced from Phantom Nightmare. So, I mean, look, if this is something that you like, maybe we can do another one of these videos next week and cover those off. Next up, some interesting decks that topped over the weekend. So well, there's been a lot of regionals happening around the world. Uh, and I thought it would be cool to point out some of the decks that did quite well that maybe aren't sort of the top contenders because obviously we're, we're all expecting the unchains the pearlies the labyrinth the tealament those kind of decks to do really well but what are the more rogue decks out there that are still holding their own so there's two decks uh, so far from my research that caught my eye the first one which i've unfortunately been unable to find a deck list for but i've seen a report that karakuri made top eight in a slovenia regional with 87 uh, players so that's pretty decent i would be very curious to see what a karakuri build looks like in 2023 um it's uh, alexander cargill was the player um, and i'm very keen if you know if you've seen his list uh let me know in the comments because i'd be keen to check it out there's also another one that caught my eye it is dinosaurs so dinosaurs got new support in wild survivors which was i mean probably about six months ago now nearly uh and uh they they did okay and then just quickly got eclipsed again by the rest of the meta but dominic schneider in uh, switzerland in a regional with 170 players managed to get top eight with dinosaurs so uh, i'll put the list up here because that's actually known and uh it, it looks pretty standard uh to prosperity maybe that's just a, a price uh problem um but good to see dinos out there still representing i can't remember if it happened this week or last week so i'm gonna check it in here anyway just in case you haven't seen, um, this is the supposed completed set list for the Fire King structure deck. This is the retrain of the Fire Kings as a structure deck R in Japan. Um, and obviously the nice things to see in here, we've got the Droll and Lockbird reprint, the Infinite and Permanence reprint, Solemn Judgment is really nice. It looks like a really solid deck on top of also giving you everything that you need for the Fire King deck. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be picking up three of these when they come out for sure. As for Master Jewel, there is a new pack coming out. It is called Flame of Fury and it's going to include more Kishtira cards, Telements cards, and Gishki cards, as well as debuting the Rescue Ace cards, which is obviously where it probably gets the fiery name from. Um, on top of debuting these cards, it's also going to be adding a couple of the cards to the limited list as soon as they're released, which are Pressured Planet Rates Off and Telements Kishtira. Who could have guessed that Kashdira might be problematic in Master Duel? Uh, for the time being though, you can still play Full Power or Rise Heart, so that's something I guess. Sticking with Master Duel, there's also a banned list, a forbidden and limited list, that is going to be implemented on October 10th, which is very soon. <laughs> uh, and it's going to see the banning of Kalbeck, the Ancient Vanguard, and number 89, Diablosis, the Mind Hacker. They're also limiting Nimble Beaver and Telement Haveness, so those cards will only be playable at one copy each per deck. 
no cards have been added to the semi-limited list and then they have unlimited adamant cepeda analyzer luster pendulum the draco slayer and number 75 bamboozling gossip shadow Alrighty, that's everything you missed news-wise this week in Yu-Gi-Oh! If you've enjoyed this style video, please do let me know because that's kind of the feedback that I'm looking for. These take a fair bit of research and linking and all that kind of stuff. So I want to make sure that you guys actually enjoy it and it's useful. So let me know in the comments down below if you got anything out of this video. Um, feel free to subscribe and ring that notification bell if you want to see my other videos. There are always weekly videos so you can always come back and get something new to watch for your hard-earned time. Uh, and I will see you in the next one.